In this video, I'm gonna talk to you guys about the signs of autism I saw in my son Christian from when he was a baby up until about three or four years old. I wanna show you guys some videos and explain in detail what really made me get some support from his doctor and look for a autism diagnosis. A lot of these things may be things that your children do and that does not necessarily mean that they have autism. I would definitely look for some professional assistance in getting some support for your child. Every child on the spectrum is different. I'm sure you guys have heard that many times, but it's definitely the, the truth. So if your child does some of these things, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have autism. It takes a lot to get an autism diagnosis. A lot of things that they have to present with in order for them to get this diagnosis. I realize that I've never done a video like this in the past. I've told you guys our story, but I wanna make sure to have a video specifically about the signs of autism that I saw. Let me go ahead and talk to you guys about the signs that I saw in Christian. So looking back when Christian was a baby, I can't really say that I saw anything that made me question anything. Um, he was a very, very calm baby. He, I remember thinking that he was a lot calmer than Haiti, loved to be rocked in his rocking swing, um, was not not very easy to make smile I do remember that I feel like it took a lot for us to make him like smile even early on um, when he was like four to six months or whenever babies giggle I remember thinking like kind of comparing my children like Haiti used to laugh a lot just by looking at us and Christian it would require a lot of tickles that's pretty much all I remember from when he was really young he did meet all of his milestones on time so he would he was crawling he walked at about a year old from 12 months and on I remember that's when I specifically started questioning a few things I remember thinking that Christian had a very raspy voice I don't know that's like a random thing but he had a raspy voice your turn but didn't babble a lot and I remember questioning my parents I remember questioning friends like hey is it normal that my son isn't really like saying mama dada anything like that and I remember everybody would tell me that that was normal because he was a boy boys take longer don't worry about it he'll start talking when he's ready and I started to not worry as much but I always had it in the back of my head Ooh, hey. Moving forward to when he was about maybe 14, 16 months, I remember thinking that he wasn't engaging with us as often. I remember that he was really, really into Mickey Mouse. So that was one of like his things that he was focused on Mickey Mouse, Clubhouse, anytime that Mickey was on, um, you can call his name, you can like try to entice him with like toys and nothing was as um, engaging to him as Mickey Mouse. He was really focused on that. I remember around that time realizing that Christian wasn't responding to his name. Christian. 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 So we would be like next to him, screaming his name, um, trying to get his attention in front of him, and he would just kind of like look around us to whatever was catching his attention. He never wanted to make eye contact with us. Um, he never really turned and engaged with us when we would try to get his attention. So that was really hard, um, just getting his attention and um, playing with him. So he was not interested in toys the, the way that other kids were. It seemed like it was like a like a chore, like work for him to play with toys. Um, I I remember um, Christian always would pull us to whatever kind of caught his attention. He, If he wanted our attention, uh, at that point he would kind of like grab our hand, kind of pull us towards whatever it was, and that was the way that he would communicate his needs. But when there was that rare toy that he really liked, I remember that he quickly lost interest or if it was out of sight, it was out of mind. Like if we had a car that he was actually like interested in for whatever reason, if he was touching it, if it was to fall from his hands, he wouldn't look down and grab it, he would just let it be. Like it was like, it was out of sight, out of the world. Like he didn't remember it, he didn't care for it. It was um, kind of different because you know, when kids kids are interested in something even if it falls they'll usually pick it up or if I take it from a kid they usually like try to take it back um, that wasn't the case for Christian so when Christian was a little bit older at this point I do remember that he was uh, a lot more pickier with food he had I believe just a handful of foods that he would eat it was like the common junk food chicken nuggets uh, french fries mac and cheese um, he didn't want to touch 
eggs. He didn't want to eat chicken. He, like that wasn't like chicken nuggets. He was very picky about his food. Very picky. I remember we would struggle with that. So to really break it down at this point, I remember really thinking about these things now, like, wait a minute, why is he not pointing? Why is he not really playing with us? Why is he not looking at us, responding to his name? And why is he such a picky eater? Like those were the, the main things that were really having me question things. Um, I remember thinking that especially at this point, he should have words. I remember Haiti had a handful of words and it was really bizarre to me that he didn't have words. He was making some noises, but never full words. And it was never like with an intention. It was just random sounds. Bread. but they never sounded like words. So I remember talking to his pediatrician. She always kept, you know, an eye on him, said that some boys or some babies do take a while, but she was taking notes of these things. And as the months went on, she kept asking me a series of questions. Is he talking now? Is he engaging with you guys? Is he um, listening to, responding to his name? And we kept saying no. And at this point, the pediatrician referred us to early um, intervention. It was a program that was meant to help us to get him to where he needed to be developmentally. Um, so this was no way still like talking about autism. It was just to get him where he needed to be. Once we went to that appointment, they also did some tests, but they also told us they were gonna do a test on autism because he was so delayed. At that point when they were doing the test, I started getting a little nervous and started to understand how delayed he was. Um, he wouldn't respond to his name, of course. He wouldn't engage with them at all with the toys that he was supposed to be playing with at this age. Um, they asked me specifically to make him laugh without touching him. And I never realized that I couldn't. And I remember this was really hard for me to, to process after this appointment because they told me to make them laugh. I did silly faces. I did all the things that a lot of kids should be laughing at and I couldn't make them even look at me. I couldn't make them engage with me. I couldn't make them laugh. And I remember thinking, how did I not realize this before? Like I really did have to touch him, tickle him, squeeze him, do things like that to make them laugh. And it, it was really heartbreaking. So I remember they took note of that. They took note of the way that he played with things. He would mouth things. Um, he would forget things like toys, like out of sight, out of mind still. At that point, they did say he was really um, in the red zone or red flags for having autism. So I started Googling things. I remember that the doctor that diagnosed him also specifically mentioned the fact that he didn't respond to his name. The fact that he was really interested in bubbles for like a couple seconds, but then he could care less about the fact that he um, would drop a toy that was actually interesting to him and then forget about it immediately. Those were all the things that he really took note of and the way that he wasn't engaging with anybody in the room, um, even though they were like making funny noises or doing like the songs. He had no interest in that, no eye contact at all, he wouldn't point to the things he needed. So all of these things were um, one of the main reasons why um, he was diagnosed. When he was diagnosed, he was, um, I believe, a little over two years old. We were already getting some support from early intervention. Uh, we were working on pointing. We were working on eye contact when wanting to request things. And we were working on responding to his name. Those were the three big things that early intervention helped us with and helped us as parents understand what we needed to do to get that going. So those were the signs um, that I saw in my son between being a newborn to being three years old. Um, we really focused on his communication because he was nonverbal. Uh, we really focused on visuals, on pegs, on getting our attention appropriately, pointing to what he needed. Uh, we really got him to be more alert of his surroundings. When he was diagnosed, they kind of like, they kind of categorize where your child is based on their developmental age versus their, their age. And Christian was two years old, but he was developmentally at about a one year old or less. So that was really hard to hear. But um, I knew that this was really important to get that diagnosis, to get support. So never be scared of these signs um, and never think that these signs are gonna be the end all and this is where your child's gonna be forever because it's not, um, it's important to get a diagnosis or get help as early as possible. So I hope that this video gives you guys some insight on some of the signs that I saw in my son. And just because these are his signs doesn't mean that other signs are not out there. Every child is different. Um, some kiddos love to align things. Some kiddos have echolalia where they repeat everything. Some kiddos struggle with social skills. So there is a lot out there. And there's definitely a lot that you can do to research some of these um, signs that may be um, signs of autism. 
but I highly recommend looking into this, getting support from your pediatrician, getting support from, from professionals out there. I personally really like seeing these kinds of videos from other family members because it lets me see the difference in autism that's out there. It definitely is a spectrum. It's important to not focus on like levels and labels and just get support because that's really important for our kiddos. Our kiddos will, will thrive if they have our support and our love and our patience. Um, my son is thriving and maybe soon I'll make a video of his signs of autism that he has right now between the ages of like five and seven where he's currently at because there was a big milestone leap that he did um, in regards to like potty training and communication and all the things that make Chris Christian, Christian now I would love to share that with you guys so um, I hope this video helps you guys I hope that you guys are staying positive in all of your journey and um, if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to share some of the signs that you guys saw in your kiddo or that you currently see that it's making you guys question if there might be something going on um, please let me know share with me I would love to hear your story don't forget to subscribe if you would love to follow our autism family journey we do share vlogs showing you guys our son's journey um, the positive outlook the hard stuff and just real life please make sure to subscribe hit that bell to get notified when we post videos and i will see you guys real soon bye